This is Kurt Karsich, principal of Point Pleasant Borough High School. This presentation will provide detailed information about the new schedule for the 2019-2020 school year. The Master Schedule Committee was formed in December of 2015 because there were a number of concerns regarding our current schedule. Many students did not receive the classes they wanted because of scheduling conflicts. They had limited electives to choose from and were feeling the negative effects from a long day that started at 7.10 a.m. in order to take eight classes. The committee began with a thorough evaluation of our current schedule and made a list of the pros and cons. The next step was to research other schedules and determine if there was a better schedule for our students. Here is our current schedule. 77% of our student body begins school with period two at 8 a.m. and the other 23% have period one at 7.10 a.m. The question is, why make a change? I have broken down the concerns into five distinct categories. Flexibility, wellness, security, instructional time, and academic disadvantages. Flexibility. The current schedule is very rigid as there are only seven slots to choose from and many students do not get the classes they request. Our current elective options are very limited, especially in the area of career exploration. Since the current schedule does not allow for extra help during the school day, extra help is offered after school, but many students don't attend because of other obligations. Student wellness. There is extensive research that students are not getting enough sleep and having students arrive at 7 a.m. is simply too early. These students are feeling the negative effects of a long day. As many of the students taking period one are the same students who are involved in after school activities and not starting their homework until late in the evening. In our current schedule, 25% of our students have period four lunch at 9.39 a.m., which is less than ideal. There are also multiple transitions during the day as students move from class to class to class during a nine period day. Some students currently do not get any lunch, any time for lunch on a lab science day. Building security. We currently have four lunch periods over three and a half hours where students are entering and ex exiting the building. This is a very real concern as we operate an open campus for three and a half hours each and every day. Instructional time. 45 minutes goes by very fast. I've been here seven years now and I can tell you that there are many occasions where the teacher and the students would have benefited from an additional time in that class period. There are very limited opportunities for in-depth discussion and higher order thinking. Academic disadvantages. Only 23% of our students take advantage of period one. This means 77% are only taking seven academic classes. These students are at a disadvantage when competing for college acceptance against students from other schools. Most other schools offer eight courses in a schedule. Staff and students are divided into two separate schedules. That creates several issues, including period one teachers not being available to provide extra help after school because they are following a different schedule. When the committee was first formed in December of 2015, we got together and discussed what the, the purpose of the committee would be and what our, our focus would be. And the first thing we wanted to do was really take a good hard look at our current schedule and really weigh the pros and the cons of our current schedule and really take an in-depth, detailed look at that. The next thing we did in 2016-17 year was we researched a variety of other schedules. Uh, we looked at many, many different schedules. We looked, we did, uh, had discussions and did visits to schools such as Pinelands, Manasquan, Manalapan, Barnegat, Homedale, um, and really gather a lot of good information and data on a variety of different schedules. We then did a site visit to Manalapan. We attended uh, multiple workshops and also began to survey our own teachers regarding the length of the instructional period. In 2017-18 school year, the committee really began to focus on the rotate and drop schedule, that it became clear to the committee members that this was a, a direction that really intrigued us as a committee and we were very interested in. We did a site visit to Manasquan and had follow-up meetings with them and ultimately uh, wanted to talk more about as they were moving to this rotate and drop schedule uh, in, in this past year, which they have. Uh, we wanted to talk to them more in detail about the schedule and understand how they got to that conclusion on their end and they referred us to Nutley High School 
and they said it was invaluable, the site visit they did to Nutley High School, because they learned a lot about the logistics of the schedule. We also were intrigued by Nutley because they're one of the few schools that uh, offers open lunch still, as we do here in Point Pleasant. So for those reasons, uh, we wanted to visit Nutley, and we did, and learned uh, a lot in, in our trip there. Um, and after that visit and the committee meeting and going through all the information we had gathered uh, is when we, we, the committee was unanimous in deciding that we thought this was the right schedule for us to move forward with. We introduced the schedule uh, to our committee, to the uh, faculty in May uh, of 2018, and then heading into the following school year, 2018-19, that summer, there were several presentations to the central office, uh, a presentation to the Board of Education on August 20th, and then in November, there was another uh, teacher visit, more from a professional development standpoint and planning purposes to go to Nutley, as well as a uh, presentation at a PTO meeting, uh, my principal advisories committee, and really uh, gearing up for implementation in the following year and uh, hitting all those distribution channels for communicating about the new schedule. Okay, so here is a visual of the rotate and drop schedule and how it works. The best way to explain it is you have a four classes that are assigned to a student in the morning, but only three of those four classes meet. There's four classes assigned to a student in the afternoon, and only three of those classes meet on a given day. As you can see, it's a four-day rotation, day A, day B, day C, and day D. The block refers to the time of day. So block one begins at 7.50 and ends at 8.47. That happens to be two minutes longer because it includes the flag salute but every other block is 55 minutes. So that is the scheduled amount of instructional time during a block is 55 minutes. The period refers to the actual class the student is taking. So let's take a look at period one. Let's just say that's a student's math class. They will have math period one on an A day would be at 750. And then as it rotates on the next day, that same math class would now be taken at 851. And on a C day, the math class would be at 950. On a D-Day, the class would drop, so they would not have math class on a D-Day. So you have each class three out of four days in the rotation. Let's look at period two. Say this is a student's English class. On an A-Day, you have English class at 851. On a B-Day at 950. A C-Day, you don't have English class because it drops, and then it comes back in the rotation on a D-Day. This morning block of classes and afternoon block are separated by this lunch and learn period, which I will talk about in greater detail later. And I will give you more detail on this schedule with some sample student schedules in a few minutes. Here is an overview of the rotate and drop schedule. The entire building will now be on one schedule. Extra help for all students will be embedded into the school day. School will begin at 7.50 a.m and end at 2.38 p.m. Each block will consist of 55 minutes of instructional time, except for the first block, which is two minutes longer to account for the flag salute and announcements. Lunch and learn. This is that one hour time that, that separates the morning and afternoon classes. What will happen during this time? Extra help with teachers, club meetings, additional instruction in certain classes, and yes, lunch. Science will have extra instructional time to conduct lab experiments once in a four-day cycle. When a student's science class falls adjacent to lunch in the rotation, the class period will be extended by 20 minutes. Advanced placement classes will have an extra 10 minutes once in a four-day cycle to ensure students are fully prepared for their AP exams in May. Algebra 1 will also have added instructional time once every four-day cycle for a number of reasons. First, we all know that ninth grade is a big transitional year for students, and they're coming from a schedule at Memorial Middle School where they're used to 78 minutes per day of math. Second, Algebra I is a foundational course and is the basis for all other math courses. And three, it is a graduation requirement. There are several benefits of the rotate and drop schedule that I will break down into three categories academic, wellness, and college prep. Academic. There's an, all students will have the opportunity to now take eight classes, 
previously, only period one students had the opportunity to take eight classes. Expanded elective and career options. We will be adding some new courses for next year that we're very excited about. They include AP Psychology, General Psychology, AP Environmental Science, Robotics, Forensic Science, and Criminal Justice. Longer instructional periods for deeper engagement in content. Increased advanced placement and dual enrollment opportunities. I already mentioned the two new AP courses for next year. We will also be adding seven new dual enrollment classes for college credit offered through Ocean County College. Rotating periods to break the monotony of having the same class at the same time every day. I see that as a benefit to both students and teachers. Less time in the hallways, which will result in more time in the classroom. Wellness. Later start time for current period one students. Everyone will now be starting school at 7.50 a.m. Extra help will now be offered during the school day, built into the school day for all students. More opportunities for students to get involved. Some students did not have the opportunity to participate in clubs because of other obligations after school. They will now have the opportunity to participate in clubs because that will be embedded as part of the school day during the lunch and learn time. Homework. The rotate and drop schedule provides students the opportunity to get more done during the school day, thereby reducing the workload at home. Students will only have six classes to focus on and prepare for, as opposed to seven or eight in a given day in our current schedule. Students will also have the option of taking a study hall to get a jump start on their homework. College prep. The new schedule promotes independence and decision making two essential skills needed to be successful in college. Students will have the freedom to choose how to use their time during lunch and learn. One day they may choose extra help and a quick lunch in the cafeteria. One day they may grab lunch on the go in town and come back to school for a club meeting. And yet another day they may decide that they need a full hour to get away and take a break and go out to eat for the entire 60 minutes. These types of decisions will be beneficial to students when they transition to higher education. Benefits of Lunch and Learn We've already discussed the long list of benefits associated with the rotate and drop schedule. There are also additional benefits to a lunch and learn period. Building security. Instead of three and a half hours of students in and out of the building with our open campus, there will only be one hour where the building is open. During lunch and learn, all administrators will have specific assignments and be highly visible both inside and outside the building to ensure the orderly operation of the school during this time. No more 9.40 a.m. lunch. Obviously, 9.40 period four lunch has been a problem for a very long time, and there will be no more students being forced to have lunch at 9.40 in the morning. Lunch with friends. Currently, we have many students that request schedule changes to have lunch with their friends. During the new schedule, everybody will have the opportunity to eat with their friends. More opportunities to get involved, such as clubs, extra help being offered during the school day instead of after school, and counseling opportunities. There are many times throughout the year where counselors need to meet with students. Students will ha now have the opportunity to meet with their counselors during lunch and learn time rather than miss valuable instructional time during the school day. Let's take a look at a typical ninth grade schedule. As you can see, this student has mixed chorus during period one. That means this class on an A day will meet during the first block, on a B day meet during the second block, and on a C day meet during the third block. On a D day, the class would drop. And the other classes, English and Italian follow, and PE, follow a similar pattern. Let's look at the afternoon. Biology is one of those classes that gains additional time when it's adjacent to the lunch and learn period during the four-day cycle. So biology, because on an A day it falls directly adjacent to the lunch and learn period, the class will be extended by 20 minutes. Therefore, the lunch and learn period is only 40 minutes because we're stealing 20 minutes of time to extend biology for, for lab purposes. And then on the next day, a B day, 
Algebra 1 happens to fall in this slot. When Algebra 1 falls there, which also gains additional instructional time, that gains an extra 10 minutes. So we're stealing 10 minutes from the lunch and learn. And then on a C day, you can see there's, there is nothing uh, taking any adding any instructional time from lunch and learn. And world history, same thing. So as you can see, on an A day, the student has a 40 minutes for lunch and learn. On a B day, 50 minutes. On a C day, 60 minutes. And on a D day, 60 minutes. This is where the whole idea of mapping out your schedule, making decisions, uh, time management all come into play. So the student may decide not to go out to lunch on a given day because they have a shortened lunch period. Or they may decide to and then come back for extra help or a club meeting depending on what they have on their schedule for that given day. Now let's take a look at a 12th grade student's schedule. As you can see, similar rotation again, applied arts, A day, first block, B day, second block, C day, third block, on a D day, it would drop. This student also has a study hall built into the schedule. So as you can see, there's no study hall on A day because it's the class that got dropped. But then on B day, C day, and D day, the student has a 55 minute study hall built into the schedule. This student has two AP classes. And when those AP classes are adjacent to the lunch and learn period, as you see here with calculus, and also biology, actually biology is 20 minutes because it's a science class, all science classes are 20 minutes. You can see how that affects them, the schedule and the lunch and learn period. So this student would have on an A day 60 minutes for the lunch and learn, on a B day 50 minutes, C day 40, and on a D day 60 minutes. I hope you found this presentation of the new rotate and drop schedule helpful. If you have any additional questions, please refer to our frequently asked questions on our website where there's a, a ton of information about the new schedule and all your questions can get answered. If for some reason there's a question that is not answered, please feel free to email me directly. Thank you.